Hi everyone, I'm Rosy Rivera and today I'm sharing how to make this adorable little witch doll using cold porcelain clay and some fabric. So we have a mixed media project. I hope you like it. Let's get started. First, we're going to start by prepping our bottle. In my case, I'm using this mold bottle you can see here and just make sure you remove the label. Since our figure this time has dark shades or dark colors, we're not gonna bother changing the color of the bottle. We can leave it as is. In my case, I prepped some glue. This is a 50 density glue. You can use Elmer's glue, but not the school one. So it has to be wood glue or you can use primer as well. So as you can see, I have this little sponge and I'm just gonna dab it in the glue and then lightly dab it all over the bottle. Slowly, just making sure we cover every part of the bottle because this will be the base for our doll. Once it's dry, you'll notice it looks a little matte and it has a texture. You can see the difference clearly here. Once that's done, we can start working on the skirt for a doll. In this case, I'm using fabric. This is felt. And I'm using a black collar and I'm also using lace. So this base piece for the skirt is 30 centimeters plus 24 makes 54 centimeters and that's roughly 21 inches long or wide however you want to look at it and 21 centimeters tall which is roughly 8 inches. Now fold it in half put both sides together, so left and right, and then we're going to start sewing them. I'm using purple thread. Of course, you can use black or any other color you want. Ideally, this will not be visible, so it shouldn't matter, but still, we're choosing a color just to be cautious. So here we're going to use a running stitch. And if you notice, it's not going to be noticeable on the other side. And we're just going to do this along the entire side. Once that's done, we have our two sides sewn together. So we have one single piece. That's going to be the base for our skirt. Now we're going to add the lace. We can do this before sewing both sides together. I just prefer to do it afterwards. And again, using that purple thread, since I'm using purple color, well, shades and tones all throughout this project, I'm using purple thread here as well. And again, using that running stitch to add that lace to the bottom of our new skirt piece. I want it to be barely visible, so just enough that it looks like a um, decorative item, but not too much that it takes over. And just do the same thing all around. In the back, you might have a little bit of lace left over, so I'm just going to cut that excess and to make it look very neat and put well put together, I'm going to fold over that little bit of excess and then pass a needle through it to seal it off. And then I'm just going to add the knot on the back. So 
So I'm just doing that here right now. And to add one more little decorative item, I'm going to do the same thing. So another running stitch right above this one. I'm also using purple for this. And just do that same thing all around again. So now we have a full decoration on both the lace stitch and right above it. And it's going to complement our purple theme for the rest of this doll. Now I'm going to run this run the thread through the top to sort of cinch it at what would be the waist of a doll. Do that all around, pull the thread so it cinches the fabric. You can, of course, paint your bottle in black, like I mentioned before, or any other color. In this case, I'm leaving it as is because it's not going to be noticeable. So I'd rather just reduce my cost for the project. I'm going to place that waist area, cinch it around the neck of the bottle, right where it meets like the widest part of the bottle, where it starts to get wide. So I'm just going to tighten that as much as I can and then make a knot to secure it in place. Once that's done, it's going to look like this. So you see like a skirt, like a real actual skirt and that fell, but that's okay. Now for that torso, we're going to make in a bit. I have three centimeters at the top of the bottle. Now we're going to continue with the neck and the shoulders for our doll. For the neck and shoulders, we need one tablespoon of cold porcelain clay and a wooden stick. This one is 27 centimeters tall. which is roughly 10.6 inches. We're just going to net that thoroughly, make a ball. Try to keep it as smooth, try to make it as smooth as we can. And then make that tear shape. Sort of like a very round, smooth triangle. And this is where we're going to start shaping those shoulders and the neck. So as you can see, I'm just modeling that here. If, well, to keep everything smooth, I'm just gonna use a little bit of Vaseline. As you can see, now I'm using another tool to make that hole where the wooden dowel is gonna go, just to keep it as mess free as possible. You can also just coat the dowel in Vaseline. As you notice, this is going to make it much easier. But the best way to measure is using the bottle. So just putting that dowel all the way to the bottom of the bottle. Marking where that model ends. And then we're going to have that accurate measurement of the piece is going to be outside of the bottle and thus becomes our neck and shoulders. I'm going to align the base of my neck and shoulders to that mark I just made. And just measuring to confirm that's correct. And now we're going to shape it. So make sure we get that neck. And 
And now that bottom of our dowel is going to go inside the bottle. I'm measuring an eighth of a teaspoon of cold porcelain clay. In my case, it's black. You can use any color. This is what I'm going to use to make sure it's secure to the bottom and doesn't move around inside the bottle. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and then finally put, well, place it inside of the bottle. Push it to the bottom, make sure it's secure. Just also always being careful not to ruin what we just sculpted. Now we're going to add some glue around the opening of the bottle and secure our neck and shoulders to it. Making sure it's very firm and secure. Now again, defining that neck, defining the shoulders. Just like this. So now we're just going to highlight like that area of her neck. We're not going to pay too much attention to like clavicles and stuff since she's in this case we're creating a little girl. So trying to keep those features as soft as we can. We're going to continue working with the torso before we move on to the arms. So we're going to measure two tablespoons of cold porcelain clay in black. Knit it thoroughly. Now we're making this cylinder and we're going to stretch it. We're trying to keep it as thick as possible so we're not going to thin it out too much. We just have to stretch it enough that it can go all, all around the torso we just made for our doll. So I'm just measuring that right now. Now I am cutting off the excess because I don't want it to be too tall. I'm trying to go and just make sure we cover all around the body, but not to the point that it's going to cover the neck. Now I'm going to use a measuring spoon. The one I have is for half a teaspoon to make that space for the neck. Just like this. So we're just going to cut it out. Now we're going to add some glue around the fabric just to make sure everything sticks to each other. Now we're going to place it on top of our neck and shoulder base. Adding some more glue on the back. And just doing this slowly to make sure we get a very delicate finish. Cutting the excess. Smooth it out. And then join the excess at the top. We're going to join it together. The excess from the back and the front. To make those like the top of the dress. And then cut the excess and smooth it out. Now we're going to work on a sort of neck for her dress. You can use lace like I just showed here, but in this case, we're going to use half a teaspoon of cold porcelain clay, also in black. Well, two half a teaspoon. 
make it sort of a half moon we're gonna start with that teardrop shape there we go with that moon and that's gonna go on one side of her neck adding some glue and then we paste it securely to that side and we're gonna do the same on the other side Once that's done, I have a purple ribbon here that I'm going to use to accentuate the waist of the dress. This one is two and a half centimeters wide, which is roughly an inch. So I'm just going to put it all around her dress, tightening it at the back. and that uh, make sure the connection between her torso and the skirt is seamless. So just tie that tightly and cut the excess of ribbon. Now in this case I'm going to make a ribbon. Mine is going to be 57 centimeters long, long, which is 22 inches. So I'm making that ribbon right there. Now I am cutting the edges to make it look pretty. I'm cutting diagonally for this. You can burn the edge to keep it from coming undone or just add a little bit of glue and that should keep it in place once it dries. So just whichever method you prefer. Since this one is synthetic, I am going to use silicone to glue them together. So I'm just adding a little bit there and then putting that ribbon on the back of her dress. And now we almost have our doll's body ready. I'm just cleaning it up a bit since it can get some cornstarch on it since I usually work around cornstarch a lot. So now we're going to move on to her arms. I was going to decorate her dress but it's better to leave that until the end. So let's proceed. For the arms we're going to measure half a tablespoon of black hole porcelain clay, knit it thoroughly and make a ball. And yes, that's half a tablespoon for each arm. You're going to make a cylinder and right at the middle I'm making a dent that's going to be the elbow. So we're not going to glue that yet because we still have some other things to do, but I'm just measuring it to make sure I'm getting the right proportions for her. Now I'm making a indent that's more like a hole where the hands are going to go. And then I did the same for the other arm. Now we're going to measure half a teaspoon of clay in the, our skin color. So whichever color you're making your beautiful doll. I am going to stretch that out, keeping it wider or rounder on both ends because these are going to become our hands. Making sure they are the same size.
and now I'm going to start making the hands in here. So one single cut to make that thumb and then three more cuts to get the other four fingers. Now I'm shaping it so I'm, in this case I'm making the index shorter than the middle finger, rounding the fingers out at the tips, using my silicone brush to smooth things out and now we have a hand. Now I'm going to do the same on the other one, trying to keep it the same size and making sure I get left and right. So avoiding having both thumbs facing the same direction, for example. So shaping that hand. rounding the fingertips marking the knuckles now I am sort of rounding her palm palms and now we're going to shade it so I'm using a light peach for this right now, just lightly brushing it over her fingers. And now we're going to cut those two hands in half, the connection, the connection in half. So we have two separate hands now. So I'm defining the wrist and then pulling off the axis so I just get the hand and the wrist and a tiny bit extra where I can glue it to the arm. Now I'm going to add a little bit of wire. This is going to make sure it's extra secure and this is three centimeters long. Just roughly 1.18 inches. Adding a little bit of glue. And again, this is just to make sure they're as stable and secure as possible and they don't fall off eventually. So put, running the wire through the hand and now through the arm. Making sure we add a little bit of glue to help everything stick together. Okay, now we're going back to our lace. I have a 10 centimeter piece. And again, we're gonna use our thread to cinch it. To get this effect on the sleeves. I'm going to measure to see how tightly I need to cinch it. And we're not going to close it yet because I need to glue it on the on the arm, the porcelain arm. So I finished cinching it, but I'm not going to make it tightly cinched because now I need to put that around the arm and glue it. Remember to be gentle with while holding the arms since this porcelain is still soft. It hasn't dried up. So I'm just adjusting it, getting it to look the way I want it to. 
I want to I want to make sure that hands are visible. And now to join both materials, I'm going back to using ribbon. I'm using a very thin ribbon this time. Making that 12 inches long. We're not going to make a bow this time. And sadly, that's slightly off camera, but I realized it in time. Now, very softly, tighten that up. Make one knot. You can make it a bow. And like I said, I'm just going to leave it as is. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now when I have both hands like this, the way I want to, both arms, I am going to get a little bit of purple paint and make stripes all across her, her sleeves. Should have said all around instead of all across, but yes. So making one purple stripe, leaving the black space, another purple stripe, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other arm. Now I'm going to get this metallic purple. And I'm going to use it to make those stripes stand out a little bit more. So we're just going to do the same thing all around and make sure we do it on both arms. Once we're done with both, it's going to look like this and I'm going to get a little toothpick piece. Get a little bit of glue, dip it in the glue, and this is how we're going to secure the arms to the torso. Adding glue on the arm as well, and then Placing it where it goes on the torso. Press it lightly and now we have the basic shape for our doll. Now once that's dried, I'm getting that same black paint that I used to dye the clay and I'm making lines on that, on those purple stripes as you can see to make it look a little bit more delicate. And now it looks like this. Now, to make sure the hands and the arms dry close to each other, so like she's holding her hands, I'm just tying those ribbons temporarily to keep her hands as close together as possible while they dry.
Once they dry, we can untie them and they would stay close together. Now for the next step, we're going to measure two pieces of one eighth of a teaspoon in black clay. Knead it thoroughly and we're going to make a shape like the one we made for the neck of her dress, the neckline. Now add some glue around that arm. This is where that piece is going to go. So make sure the ends are as thin as you can so they blend nicely with the rest of her dress. Now you're going to do the same on the other one. So this is just decoration for her dress. Place it around that shoulder like this and with that rubber brush, that silicone brush, making sure it's in place. Now we're going to get more of that thin ribbon, thin black ribbon, getting another 12 inches of ribbon. And now we're going to make a bow. Just like this. And we're going to glue it right where both sides of her dress neckline meet. Now we're going to add a sort of brooch and for this we're using a very tiny pumpkin just like this. And we're going to wait for that to dry. For the face we're going to measure two tablespoons of cold porcelain in the color we have chosen for our skin and a styrofoam ball of six centimeters in diameter and we're going to cut roughly one third of that. This is going to be the base for the head. Now I'm going to knead this clay thoroughly. Try to make it as smooth as possible. Shape it into a ball. You might need to apply a little bit more strength just to make sure it's as smooth as possible. Once it looks like this, we're going to flatten it a bit to roughly the size of the sphere. And then we're going to make some indents for the area where we're going to define her nose and eyes. Use Vaseline if needed to help smooth things out. Now we're going to add glue all around it. And place our face right on top. We don't need to cover the entire sphere since her hair is going to cover the back. Make sure that's properly glued. Again, making sure we don't lose the shape for her eyes, her cheeks and nose. And now we're going to actually get that shape out here. So using a rubber tip brush, we're going to define her nose on the sides and at the bottom to get those nostrils. Define the eye sockets. 
and round around her nose. Making her nostrils here. Smoothing out the nose. Smoothing out the cheeks. Just like that, checking her profile from the side. Now we're going to make her mouth. Marking the sides of her mouth. And then joining those two dots we made. Lifting, pushing. And okay, now we're lifting that top lip. Just like this. Adding some more depth. And now we're going to make that bottom lip. And now we have a very basic mouth shape. So now we're going to make the chin and progress onto the cheeks. You can see the difference here from the side we just modeled and the side we haven't worked on yet. Defining her lips. Making sure we don't ruin the shape of her nose. Now I'm defining the other side of her chin and her other cheek. Smoothing things out. And again, I'm just smoothing everything out here, making sure the shape looks good from all angles. Making sure the nostrils are still visible. Just like this. Now we're going to shade this face to highlight all those features. So starting by highlighting her eye sockets on both sides. That also helps to find the eyebrow, defining her cheekbones. Now we're going to add more of a pink shade around her cheeks. Then softening it. In. Now 
and blend it. Adding a little bit on top of her nose. If you notice, this is very similar to makeup. So highlighting the same areas you would. In this case, this will be our version of lipstick. But again, we're just giving it the basic shades of the skin to give it depth and texture. And now we can start working on her eyes. As you notice, adding that little bit of shading, so some peach and pink tones, made all the difference in how her face looks right now. So I'm just making the base of the eye now, so that white area. as smooth as possible and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side trying to keep them roughly the same size now I'm going to fill it in Making sure the color is even so we don't have any skin color peeking through. She's looking into my soul now. <laughs> We're going to give her the rest of her eyes soon. So while that dries, we're actually going to move on to her lips. In this case, they're going to be purple. So using a shade similar to the one we've been using on the rest of the doll, we're just going to paint her lips. Doing this carefully, making sure we cover the lips entirely while also keeping the shape of her mouth. Just like that. Now with that metallic color, we're going to do the same thing we did on the sleeves and add a little bit of texture. So we're gonna use this color as a highlight. As you can see here. At the top and, and the bottom lip, just like this. Now while it's done, I'm just making sure it's even on the bottom as well. Now we're going to go back to painting the eyes. And we're also going to use purple for this. So making a circle at the top. Now we're going to paint this area it's 
since her eyes are very big, I'm going to make this area bigger as well. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Try to make sure they're roughly the same size and looking the same direction for this particular style. Taking my time. That one seems like it ended up being a bit bigger than this one, so I'm just evening it out. And please let us know if you would like to see shorter versions of these videos or if you'd like anything to be different. We welcome all feedback here. Now we're going to go back to that metallic purple and add some shine to her irises. Sort of a half moon at the bottom of the iris. Just like this. You can see it a little bit better there. And again, we're trying to show the entire process, so you might even see mistakes every now and then and different directions. So I try something out and then I rather try something else. So just let us know what you think about that. Doing that same thing on the other eye. Again, trying to keep it as even as possible. Once that's done, we're going to add some very subtle lines using white paint. Again, just a little bit of paint. Make some lines over that metallic purple we just added. Same thing on the other side. Just like this. Now using black paint, we're going to add that pupil. Right in the center of the iris we already made. Just like this. And we're going to do the same thing on the other eye. Now we're going to add a little bit of water to our paint to make sure it's as watered down as possible. Now we're going to continue with her eyebrows. And for this, I'm, use, I'm going to use brown. So starting here with her eyelids, And 
And now we do move on to her eyebrows. So I'm going to add a baseline first just to define her expression. Okay, now I'm, I'm getting some water on the other palette so I can water it down as needed. And I'm going to make all those very tiny hairs on her eyebrows. I want to give it texture just like this. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. And as always, just try to make them as even as possible. And now we can move on to her pupils. Now we're going to thin the paint a little bit, so water it down so it glides smoothly while we make the outline of the eye. And at the same thing, and that same stroke, we're going to start making the eyelashes. Just like this. And we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. So the concept we're going for here is sort of a Halloween costume. So this little girl is dressed as a witch. And then we have it, our eye. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other eye. Trying to keep it even with the eye we have already completed. Adding all of those eyelashes. And 
Now moving on to the bottom of her eye, adding that outline. And those eyelashes at the bottom are smaller than the ones at the top. Very subtle. Now very carefully I'm going to outline her irises using that black paint very very carefully to avoid smudges now we're going to do the same thing on the other eye Just like this. Now we're going to give her that shine in her eye, that little sparkle. So now I'm using black eyeshadow to give her eyes a little bit more depth. As you can see right there. I'm using these sort of pointer tools, just dipping them in the white paint and then adding those dots over her irises and pupil then doing the same on the other side you can see how different that looks already now we're going to let that dry thoroughly before we continue And once it's done, in well, for this doll, I want to add some freckles. So I'm just going to get that brown paint, a little bit of water, and a toothpick. So getting the paint, watering it down, and then adding the freckles across her face. So over her nose, her cheekbones. We don't want to make them 100% perfect, so we're going for more of a real look. They're not all the same size, they're not all even. Now, how many we add here is completely up to you. So feel free to add more, art less, or just skip them all together. Now she's full of freckles and we're going to clear our area to continue with the next part.
for the hair, we're going to measure two tablespoons of called porcelain clay in the color we want to use for her hair. In my case, I'm using black. Now we're going to knead this thoroughly. to cover the entire back part of the sphere that we didn't cover before. Now we're going to form that cavity for the sphere to fit into using the back of our measuring spoon. Thinning it out to make it easier to fit that in there. We're still missing a bit more space, so I'm gonna keep stretching that out. Sort of a bowl shape. Almost there. We need to stretch it a little bit more. And there we go. So now we're going to add more of that wood glue. Just to make sure both pieces are glued, are well glued together. Since we haven't sealed these pieces, you should be able to glue both clay pieces together using nothing more than water. But uh, we're just using glue for additional security, especially since we're using that foam at the back. Two birds, one stone kind of thing. Now I'm using that tool again that we use to make the hole where it's going to fit into the body of the doll just so I can apply enough pressure while adding her hair to the head. Now this excess we get at the bottom, I'm just going to cut it off. Smoothing that out, and now we're going to brush her hair. So give it some texture. Giving her a middle part all the way to the back. And we're going to brush the sides to the sides. So we're going to give it that texture on both sides, just as if she had a middle part. So just showing you what that looks like right now. And using either a coffee straw or a crochet needle or anything with that sort of shape, which is going to highlight the dents in her middle part. And we're going to add her ears. So if you notice there almost right under her eyes to the side. So that corner of her eye is the basis we use to identify where the ear should go. So 
So using our rubber tip brush, we're just gonna shape her ear and properly secure it to the sides of her head. Now we're going to shade her ears so that they match the rest of her face. Right now they stand out a little. There we go. Now we're going to add enough glue in that hole at the bottom of her of the head so we can glue it into the rest of the body. This is the chance to position the head the way you want it to look and make sure the face is looking the way you want it to because once it dries up you will most likely have to break it in order to rearrange the head again. So I'm adding something at the bottom to make sure she stays in place and it doesn't move while it dries. For her hairstyle, I am giving her pigtails. So just cutting little bits of wire again to make sure those pigtails are secured to her head and they don't fall off eventually. This makes sure our pieces last longer. So we make this sort of S shapes but they also look like staples when you turn one of the sides on the to the other side. So getting that black clay for her hair, kneading it thoroughly, and now after shaping it into a ball, we make that tear shape one more time. And same for the other pigtail. Just like this, trying to keep them the same size again. Now that they look like this, I'm going to add some texture, make it look like hair. Again, keeping that direction as if she had that middle part. Going all around that pigtail to give it a texture. And now that thinner side of the pigtail, we're going to curl it up. Adding glue to the thicker part, add the piece of wire. Since we made that hook shape, it's definitely going to stay in place. It's going to keep it secure. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other pigtail. Once we got it both, they're going to look like this. And we're going to move on to the front pieces of her hair. So we're going to make multiple pieces of half a teaspoon until we get the shape that we want for her hair. Adding texture. I'm going to make about eight of these and see if we need more as we start adding them. Now adding glue around her hairline and I'm going to start gluing in those pieces. 
curling those ends. You can also just keep them straight. I'm going to go with that curl tip look just like this. Framing her face. Now right behind those hairs we just added, we're going to add more. Give it textures. Some of them are going to come across the ones we have at the front. Going to keep adding more of those strands until I get a hairstyle I like. So we're going to give her sort of bangs. In my case, the head isn't fully dry and secure yet. So you might want to wait a little bit longer. Or just continue working carefully. Since the top of the head is going to be visible, before it dries, we're going to make sure to smooth it out, give it texture, and blend it with the top of her head. If I have pieces that are too long, just cutting off the excess to make sure they fit in nicely where I want them to. And now we're going to add some shading to her hair as well to make sure it stands out and we can actually see the hair texture. So we're going to do that on all of her hair, make it stand out. And now we're going to add some purple highlights using the metallic purple paint. So we're using it for that hair shine very lightly. Making sure we don't cover the shading so we can still get both of those tones. All the way around her head. In a sort of crown shape. Also on those pigtails, right around her middle part, and then blend it out or in, and that's done. Just making sure we get that other pigtail. Just like this. Adding a little bit on the tips of her hair. And that's that. So now we're going to continue and make some accessories for her dress. For the pumpkins, we're going to measure one teaspoon of orange clay, one eighth of a teaspoon green, one eighth of a teaspoon brown. We're going to knead that orange clay into a ball and then more of an egg shape. And depending on if you want it to be a wide or a tall pumpkin, 
they're going to add the markings in a different direction. So I want this one to be tall. I'm going to add the markings while also giving it depth. So we're not going to make those lines straight across. Make them curved. And again, you can use a coffee straw or a crochet needle to make them look more natural instead of just looking like they were cut across. We're going to make a little hole at the top of the pumpkin to add the stem. I'm going to get four pieces out of this one string, make it into a teardrop. In this case, I'm going to use two of those pieces we just cut out. Get that teardrop, flatten it a bit at the bottom, add some stripes to give it texture. And now at the top, adding a little bit of glue and then we can place that stem in there. Now using half of that green we measure, going to stretch it out to a string that we can then turn into a curl. Keeping it as even and thin as we can. We can do that by hand, we can roll it on a coffee straw. Pull it out of that, tightening it a bit more, and then we can just place it around the pop pumpkin however we want. Now just keep in mind that it's going to dry just like we leave it. So if we curl it up very tightly, that's how it's going to dry. If it uncurls while it's drying, it's not going to dry nicely. And I like it like this, so I'm just going to start shading. Using a little bit of peach just to highlight the texture and the pumpkin. Once they're dry, we're going to add a little bit of that thin string at the back. I have a couple of dry ones here already. The smaller one is half a teaspoon and the other ones are one teaspoon. Now the hands should be dry by now, so we're going to untie them. They should be able to preserve their shape now. Now this side of the fabric, of the ribbon, sorry. We're going to add a little bit of hot glue, well, silicone. We're just going to be very careful when adding that silicone on the ribbons because if it touches the fabric, it's going to leave a mark. Now we're, we're going to glue these at different heights so they look sort of stacked. As you can see, some of them are longer than the others. And I'm just being very cautious with that process of attaching them to the dress. 
none of them are the same length. And if they are a bit too close, just cut off the excess and attach them again. And when we send her up, we'll get these beautiful pumpkins that move around. And now we're going to make her hat. For the hat, we have a template available on our website. And I detail both the hat crown and the brim. And I do suggest cutting that out on a stronger cardboard. You can use that from a cereal box. Or anything that's just a bit stronger than regular paper. Gonna cut these out on felt. The same felt I use for her dress. And we're going to cut them out. One way to keep them in place while cutting them is using small clips. You can use tape. You can also just draw the shape onto the felt and then cut it. Whichever way works for you. Just like I'm doing here, for example. So I'm using my scissors to make a cut at the very center that I can then use to cut that inner circle, to cut out that inner circle. Once we're done there, I'm going to get that, like the top part of the hat and using my trusty purple thread I'm going to use a running stitch to close that up once I'm done you'll see we have that traditional witch hat style and we're gonna turn it inside out and if that tip of the hat isn't as pointy anymore, we're just going to use a tool to force it back out and get that pointy shape. Now that part that we just sewed together, we're going to leave it to the back of the hat. And now I'm connecting it to the brim. And we're going to do the same thing. And either sew it around, sew it together, sorry, or glue it together. So whichever way is easier for you. In this case, we're making the hat separate from the doll. So it can be put on and taken off as desired. And I actually made it this way because my daughter likes to play with these. Side note though, I am the daughter translating the videos. And there he goes on to the doll. And again, we're not going to glue it to the head. We're going to keep it separate so we can sort of interact with the doll, give her different styles, etc. Now, where we made that union 
between the brim and the top of the hat, we're going to add ribbon. Now on the ends of that ribbon, I'm going to add a little bit of glue. Wait, silicone actually. Or hot glue. And go all the way around. We're going to add more of that hot glue as needed. Or that liquid silicone. And as you notice, we're just layering them. And now on one side, I'm going to add a pumpkin. And I'm also going to use either a hot glue or that liquid silicone here just to make sure it stays. And here we go. That's all for today. I really hope you liked the class. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. This was Rosa Rivera. Thank you for joining us. For exclusive classes and other benefits, become a member. Go to manoscreativashn.com slash premium.